so great to see some new faces and always great to see our familiar faces. Today we have a very special spotlight speaker. Uh, Amy Jurgens is our new director here at the Entrepreneurship Center and Focus Suites. She uh, has been here well, just over a week now, right? Yep. Last week mm -hmm. was your first week. Um, she's my new boss, so let's everybody be nice. <laughs> and, uh, say nice things about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kidding. But Amy, I'm just going to open it up to you. Tell us why did you want this job? Okay. What led you here? <laughs> okay, I will. Um, before I get into that, I would like to acknowledge um, Brooke's hard work over the last year. Um, if some of you don't know, she was here by herself for the good part of the last year and did an amazing job and kept things running. So um, kudos to her for um, her hard work and um, diligence. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so my story, um, I grew up in a farm in Northwest Iowa um, and I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, I learned from the best, my dad. Um, he farmed. Um, I don't know how he did everything um, that he did. Um, you know, he was a crop farmer. He was an animal. Um, we had every kind of animal that you could possibly want on the farm. And I had an amazing childhood. Um, I am the youngest of five kids. And I am, um, I used to tease my mom that I was the oops that came along. She preferred that I was um, the gift that kept her and her and my dad young. Um, so there's 20 years between my oldest sibling and myself. And we're both female and then there's three boys in between. Um, those three boys in between are the heart of our entrepreneur um, family. Um, my oldest brother farms. Um, he took over our family farm um, when my dad wasn't able to um, continue to farm. And my next oldest brother, I consider him our artist of our family. Um, he was, he owned a body shop. And you don't, I, not very many people consider a body shop owner an artist. Um, but he did amazingly beautiful work. Um, I just was amazed at what he could do. And then my next oldest brother, again, artistic, has his own business, built a million dollar business in the middle of Iowa building cabinets. Um, and he is known um, for his cabinetry in high-end um, homes around the Clear Lake, Iowa area, Mason City, Iowa, um, Des Moines. Um, and he, he was a college dropout. So he went to Iowa State and he was, you know, going to study math and was there for a semester and decided that just wasn't for him. And then he built his business from the ground up. So I haven't built a business myself, but I feel like I've had a lot of really good um, teachers. So um, professionally, how I got here, um, I feel like my family has a little bit to do with how I got here. Um, my professional career is really divided up into two sections. Um, I worked in the corporate world for the first part of my professional career, and the second half was in nonprofit fundraising. So my first job here in Lincoln was at Woodman, <laughs> um, which is now, now called Assurity. And I worked in their brand new disability income department. And I traveled the country and trained agents on selling disability insurance. Because at that time, it was brand new. <laughs> and there weren't very many companies in the country that were offering that. Um, great experience, um, but it led me to um, take a job at the National Student Loan Program. I started there in computer support, so I have a little bit of computer background, and um, then I was in their marketing department and, again, traveled the country, um, sold the services for NSLP, and during that time, um, I met my husband. He worked at um, the same company, and we got married and knew eventually that we would probably have children and um, decided that maybe being gone all the time wasn't the best. And so um, I was offered a job at Pinnacle Bank and um, 
was in charge of their cash management department. And it, that gave me a great background for this job. Um, I worked only with businesses um, in the Lincoln area, smaller communities around Lincoln. And so um, large companies, um, worked with very large companies with their sweep accounts and helping them with their banking needs, um, helping them if they were looking for loans, would refer them to a commercial banker, um, to mom and pop shops, um, help them with their online banking, their credit cards. Um, that was a large piece of what I did. Um, I had a customer in Havelock. Uh, we decided to convert all of our credit cards over to a different company. And that meant that you had to get rid of the knuckle busters. Does everybody know what the knuckle busters were? You put a paper slip in and you had this carbon copy that you moved it across. And that gentleman refused to, like he just wasn't bought into that. Like he didn't want to buy into the technology. And it took me about six months to get him. And he finally um, converted over. And then every time he got his, um, credit card statement he called me because um, it was never right so we always made it right but it was just it was a great job to see the difference between really small companies and really large companies um, and this then led to my next step into um, nonprofit I was sitting in church one day and um, saw that there was an opening at Lincoln Lutheran for a development director and I was like, I can do that. I think that that's what I want to do. I want to look into the nonprofit. I felt the pull of that. I want to really do something for the good of our community. Um, and that was a great experience for me in nonprofit because I was the only person in their development shop. So I learned everything from um, working with donors to large events. Um, you know, we had a gala golf tournament um, to the data entry and making sure that everybody was acknowledged properly. Um, through that connection, um, I met someone who was um, in charge of advancement at Doan, and it led me into higher education. Um, that was a brand new experience for me. Um, I was on the President's Council, so I got an opportunity to look at the college as a whole and see um, really how things ran on that university. Um, I also worked at Concordia. That was my last um, position in higher ed and um, loved it there. Had a great team um, and we were raising money like crazy um, and then COVID happened and um, I lost my job. And so um, many people had struggles during COVID, right? And so that was, I would say, like a turning point for me. It was really pretty devastating um, to just have that happen. And so um, I knew that I wanted to do something different. And I ended up here at SCC, not in this job, um, I worked for the worked on the Nebraska retraining um, workforce initiative grant. So it was a part-time temporary job, and when my job was done here, I said I have to get back here. That was my goal, and it took me a year. And um, then I ha saw this opportunity, and just by chance, I had started. To work on my MBA in August of last year and it was something that I had always wanted to do um, and of course I talked to my husband about it you know how you think you communicate well with your spouse well <laughs> he thought I was just gonna take a couple classes like he didn't understand that it was a lot more than that and um, he said that to me a couple times he's like I just thought you were gonna take a class or two I didn't understand like this was going to be this intense. Um, and so that opened up a door for me to uh, um, apply to this job. And um, I really feel at home. I've only been here a week and a half, but um, I've been looking for a place that um, is both collaborative and creative. Um, 
and where I can fit in and have an opportunity to do that. And so um, even though later on, you know, in my life, I didn't find this right away, um, but I'm very happy to be here. And I'll speak for Ray too. Um, I feel at home with you here already. I, um, like you said, I've been here kind of by myself for a while and so was waiting, waiting, waiting for a new director, but at the same time, I was very nervous about having a boss <laughs> again. <laughs> and um, you've just been a great fit already, and I did not know this Clear Lake and Mason City connection. My family, or my mom's family, is from up around that area. Oh, yeah, so okay. We, um, I'm also the Caboose baby. Yes, <laughs> so. <laughs> so we have a lot in common. Yes. <laughs> Um, throughout all of your um, personal life and your career, has there been one um, a, or a top favorite quote or mm -hmm. a top favorite tool that you've used um, along your way? Yes. Um, so my husband and I have two children. We have a daughter who we shipped away to UNK, right? <laughs> she's, a, she's a freshman at UNK, and we have a son who's a junior at Lincoln Lutheran. So our daughter, since she was eight, has played competitive softball. So this is the first summer that we will be home <laughs> since she was eight. Yeah, I'm very excited. I have a list of honey-do lists that's, we're gonna, we're gonna get things done this summer. Um, so she played competitive softball and she was a student at Lincoln Lutheran and they didn't offer softball. So being the persuasive person that I am, I, when she was in middle school, I started working or talking to the athletic director at Lincoln Lutheran about what can we do about softball? We have some girls that are interested and ended up when Leah was a freshman, um, they formed a co-op with Crete. And so at the time I was working at Doan, she was not able to drive. So my lunch hour at three o'clock was spent driving to Shoemakers on the south side of Lincoln and meeting my husband who had driven her from Lincoln and then going back to Crete. And so that was, if you would ask us to do that again, we might not have done it. But so you have a kid, her first experience in high school sports, they won a state championship. And so she comes in as the outsider, and um, it could have been very easy for that team to really push her out. Um, and they didn't. They welcomed her with open arms, and she actually took the starting position of a senior. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, here's where the mean girls is gonna come out, right? And she didn't, she opened her arms. But it all came, I'm sorry, I got goosebumps. It all came from the top, their coach, and this is where the quote came from. Sorry, it took me a while to get there. So he was super high energy, very competitive, um, and I think during our daughter's sophomore year, his dad was battling ALS. So not only was he coaching a high school softball team, he was also wanting to be with his family. And he always said to the parents, and to the players, be present. And that has really stuck with me when you have outside things that are vying for your attention. Be present in the moment that you have. Be with, if it's at work, be present at work. If it's at home, be present there um, because things change pretty quickly. Um, so I've tried to adhere to that quote that's a good one it's hard it's, mm -hmm. it's something you have to remind yourself yep. often um what about this is my favorite question that we ask everybody what keeps you perked up um one of my top skill or top um, strengths is learner um so i love to learn um, if I could and I had all the money in the world, I would just go to school all the time. And I would take classes that I wouldn't normally take. Um, but what really gets me up is being able to come to a place where I know that I can be creative 
and that I can be collaborative. And I think creative can take, a lot, take on a lot of different avenues. Um, it can be a place where you can have ideas and express them and know that it's okay um, and that not every idea is going to be is, is going to work. Um, and so that's what excites me about coming here um, is to get that creative piece going. Well we definitely like to be creative mm -hmm. here in everything we do. That's why we have the word collaborate right here across our bulletin board. Everything is collaborative. So you're in the right spot. Yep. <laughs> I feel like I am. What are your favorite uh, or some of your favorite local businesses in Lincoln or in our surrounding uh, communities? Sure. Um, I love to read. Um, so um, Franny and Finch downtown. Um, I love to go in there and look around. Um, the last time I was in there, they gave me a free book. I couldn't believe it. Um, it was an advanced reader's copy, which usually, you know, those are uh, kind of hard to find. But anyway, um, I really enjoy that. Um, HF Crave is one of our favorite restaurants um, over on 48th and Holdridge. Um, also like sushi, so Hero 88, um, Blue, Gray Whale, just about any kind. Um, and then uh, for like clothing and stuff like that, um, Footloose and Fancy, that's been a great small business to go to, so. Well, does anybody have questions for Amy or comments? I have questions. Brian. Uh, what kind of books do you like to read? Um, so any kind. Um, I tend to gravitate towards uh, World War II, um, and I hesitate to say that I enjoy that genre because there's a lot of darkness that goes with that, but I feel like in most of the books that you read, there's also a victory in the end, I hope. Um, I try to get outside my comfort. Um, I just finished um, The Power of the Dog, so that was nominated for an Oscar. Um, I wanted to read the book before I watched the movie on Netflix, and I also am a Benedict Cumberbatch batch fan. And um, that was a Western. I've never read a Western before. It was an amazing book, um, and I hear that the movie is even better, so I'm looking forward to reading that. But I read all different kinds. Um, Eric Larson, I don't know if any of you have read any of his books. Um, I just finished one um, about six months ago on Winston Churchill, and so that was, it was like 600 pages, and it took a long time to get through it, but it was very interesting about how it talks about his, um, he had some very odd behaviors that not everybody knew about, um, and then how he struggled to really engage the United States in World War II. So that was very interesting with that too, but it was a long read. <laughs> Any other questions? I have one. Hi, what Kelly. are some short-term and long-term goals that you have? Um, Short term, I have two classes to finish up my MBA. <laughs> so um, I, that's my short term. My long term goal is to um, look at the Entrepreneurship Center now, um, talk to all of our customers, and be able to see opportunities to grow. Um, and I don't, I say that Kelly as a long-term goal because I feel like there's going to have to be resources that'll probably have to come along with that. And that's where I'll get my fundraising arm in there. <laughs> um, and so, but ways that we can, um, and it's not improve, but how can we serve our customers to the best of our ability? Um, and what are some things that maybe we don't offer now that we could if we had the uh, resources to do that? Mm -hmm. Tracking on that, you've heard me ask this question before. If you're sitting in that chair sharing with us five years from today, 
using your creative mind and still getting input, what do you see the Entrepreneur Center looking like? Well, I will, we're not here. We would be in, uh, and money's no object, John, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I I would foresee us in a building that's dedicated specifically for entrepreneurship. Um, that we would have offices, um, what we have right now for focus suites. But I would also like to see um, a maker space um, that would offer things different than what maybe UNL has. Um, I love the idea of a kitchen. Um, I think there's a great opportunity for that. Um, and then I also would like to see high school kids in here um, working with our, having a mentor, somebody who's already here or who's an alum of the Focus Suites and um, showing them, even if they don't necessarily start their own business that you can have an entrepreneurial mind even if you're working in a company of a thousand people um, and that means being creative being okay with making mistakes which I'll tell you right now kids in high school are scared to death of making mistakes they for whatever reason don't feel like it's okay to make a mistake um, I have, yeah, and I, I have a girl out and our daughter is just scared to death of m making a mistake or making a poor choice. Um, and I'm like, well, you can always do something else, you know, <laughs> you'll figure it out. Um, but to her, that's really difficult. And uh, so I think that that's going to, five years down the road, that's just going to be even a larger issue. Um, it's not an issue, it's just something that um, that next generation brings with them. And I think we have to address that for them to be the new entrepreneur group. So that's what I would see. Yep, Linda. I don't know if this sound like an interview question, but what's your vision for our 15 county area for SEC and the learning centers or anything like that? So I would start again with meeting with everybody. And if we're, there's not a learning center in that county, um, meeting with the leaders of the entrepreneur ecosystem, if you want to say, in that area. Um, I would like to see smaller visions or smaller replicas of what we have here in all of those different counties. And I think each county, each area could have a specific niche market if you would say um, there could be a there's a great market for agricultural entrepreneurship um, I just read an article um, from the N NDBC and sorry I, I switch those around now. sorry <laughs> um, that someone um, invented a device to it's like a robot to use in poultry and it goes through and it um, turns up the bedding and it does all these different things and the research shows that it makes for happier chickens and like you would like I'm sure that there's research that they lay more eggs and all of these different things what a amazing who would have thought of that what a great great idea and I think that there's pockets that could maybe specialize in different areas. Um, so that's what I would envision that we get that. And maybe when I get out and talk to people, that's not what they want. Maybe they want something that's centralized here and have more outreach um, services. But I really feel strongly that we need to talk to our customers before you know we make a decision about what to do. Well, I think that's great because your family is a great example of this in the middle of Iowa, which some consider, you know, boondocks. Wave Lincoln is kind of boondocks or something. Anyway, that they have shown, okay, you've got the a body work, which what Jay Leno has a school in Kansas for um, redoing older cars. Mm -hmm. 
and then you've got the cabinetry, which everyone needs. Mm -hmm. So I think your family is a great example of that. Thank you. Yeah, and I just am amazed again at the artistry of my family, and I, it, I not very artistic. I feel like I'm creative. Um, I must have been the tail end. It was all used up by the time by the time I came along. Um, but yeah, they are great examples. Have you or your kids ever had business ideas? Um, yes. Um, and I actually saw somebody that had this idea. So our daughter's always been involved in sports, but all of the footwear and like practice gear, like shorts, are all men. They're all made for men. And so I wanted to start a company that made specific um, basketball shorts and softball pants that fit the young female body. Um, and then I also thought about shoes. Well, I was watching the NCAA women's tournament and they had an entrepreneur on there and that was her business. She stole my idea. <laughs> she makes shoes specifically for female basketball players and it fits their feet. It does what it needs to do specifically for a woman. So um, those were my couple ideas. Um, our daughter wants to have her own um, accounting um, office when she um, she's going to looks like graduate ahead of time so she will get her MBA and then be able to sit for the CPA and um, eventually she wants to start her own business and then be able to be in a community that she can give back our son doesn't know what he wants to do so and that's fine he he'll figure it out but everything going on how are you doing, and what are you doing to maintain a balanced lifestyle for you and your family and your kids? Um, it, it's just kind of the way I've always operated. Um, when I'm not busy, it feels like it's then that's when it feels like my center is off. Um, so my release or my um, relaxation is being able to go to watch our son run track or watch our daughter play softball um, and then also to be able to pick up a good book and read um, so that's my release I'm trying to do better about the whole physical activity thing um, and I'm still working on that one of her top uh, five talents on the Gallup Strengths Finder assessment is Achiever. And if anybody knows anything about achiever people, they do not relax easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> yep. Any other questions? What's been your, what, has there been anything, you haven't been here that long, anything that surprised you about um, working amongst entrepreneurs or what's been your favorite thing so far? Um, I don't think I've been surprised. Um, I just like being in this environment with all of these different businesses um, and seeing how they interact with each other and um, it's just a cool vibe. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I really, I guess, enjoy. Um, and learning more about the individual businesses that are here. Um, I continue to be amazed at what people develop for a business, what they have for jobs. Um, I mean, the world is really very open. So um, when I was here, working on the grant, um, I knew that this was a place that I wanted to come back to. Um, I was, my office was on fifth floor, and I met Dr. Illich one time, and his office is also on the fifth floor. 
And after that, he remembered my name. He greeted me by name. He came and stopped by my office. And remember, I'm a part-time temporary person. Um, and he sold me. Um, because to me, if you have that leadership at the top, it allows everybody else to adhere to his leadership. And so that's, I was so impressed with that. And just the people um, were so kind to me because I came in really knowing nothing and were very gracious and patient with me. And I appreciated that too. Any final questions? Well, thank you so much, Amy. Thanks. I um, I didn't even give her the option of doing this. I <laughs> scheduled it, and I said, "You're our spotlight speaker," <laughs> and she rolled with it. So, thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody, thank you. for being here. Thank you. Um, she a mug. Yeah, she, she a mug. does have a mug, right? Yeah. <laughs> she didn't drink out of it. No, I didn't. Thank you. Speaking of the mugs, thank you so much to uh, Community Development Resources for sponsoring our Canyon Coffee every week. Uh, thank you to Ray for making sure that this whole thing, <laughs> um, she does it all. So um, thank you, everybody. Next week, we'll have Christine Weeks with Eleanor Creative. And then the following <coughs> week, we're taking a break because Amy and I are going to be at a conference. So um, we will see you back in May after that. And if anybody has any speaker suggestions um, or referrals, please send them our way. We are filling up our summer and fall slots right now. So stay around, network, have more coffee, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Yep.